Scanning for audio. Welcome to a Tin Dog Podcast. Now, I was all set to do a nice little review of the new Sarah Jane. Well, I say new, you know what I mean. Series 1, Episode 2. And that's fine. Except today, the internet seems to have melted a bit. Two major stories, which may or may not be true, have kind of turned up. The first one's very, very probably true. It's that there's going to be an official BBC Doctor Who convention. £99. Each day's the same. It feels more like the rather dodgy Angel convention I went to in Brighton than one of the rather marvellous Buffy conventions I went to in Blackpool. More cash cow than anything else. Not recommending children going, not being particularly family friendly. Yes, I know there are reasons for all of these things, but fan conventions are very, very good. They have a lot to live up to. Why does that sound so threatening? Look, the BBC have done stuff before. I'm sure the know what they're doing? Really? Possibly? You're shaking your head, aren't you? No, no, they might. They might get it right. It might be the greatest thing of all time. I mean, let's face it, it's just after my 40th birthday, so I can guarantee I won't be going. 40. How did I get so old? You've been with me for nearly five years. Over five years. It's a long, long road. Look, that's not what we're here to discuss. The other thing, and and let's face it, it's slightly more spurious, is that there may, or may not, be a Doctor Who movie. The people behind Harry Potter, British sensibilities, yeah, that's what they describe themselves as using, or getting a load of people who stepped off Downton Abbey to turn up, and they're going to try and make a Doctor Who movie. Or I, I'm sorry, I'm a reactionary old-school Doctor Who fan. Doctor Who belongs on the old screen. There you are, I've said it out loud. I like Doctor Who on the telly. Sue me. A family event. It doesn't feel right. It feels almost right, like the McGann movie felt almost, but not quite right. Don't make it in America, make it here. Don't do these things. It's English. It won't be classed as canon, after all. I mean, would it be Doctor 10.5 or 11.5 or none of the above? Would it even fit in with TV? Is it a complete... And I don't even want to use the R word. Reboot. It can't be a reimagining. Well, this would be Doctor Who version. God knows. It's not important. What is important is that it makes me uneasy. It makes me worried. I could just live in my own little world. And let's face it, we're Doctor Who fans and some of us do. And that's not a bad thing. But I'm, like I said, uneasy about the whole project. I'd rather it fell through, fell by the wayside and didn't quite work. Because the creativity required to pull off a TV series is one thing, but the creativity being drained off slightly in another direction. Unless, of course, it's Matt Smith. Matt Smith movie, just to keep him happy. You know, like the specials were. It's a hell of a way to keep someone happy. And something like this has to be accessible and marvellous to people who've never, ever seen Doctor Who. Or is that not quite the case? Is this a step closer to Doctor Who coming out on DVD before it comes out on TV? Or whatever format they choose to call it? Oh, I don't know. I'm just a reactionary. Look, enough of that. And again, before I break into my review of the Sarah Jane 1.2, I'm not completely sure when this is coming out, because this Friday on BBC One is Children in Need, and they've promised us something a bit Doctor Who-y. Between 8 and 8.30. Is it the first few minutes of the Christmas special? Most likely. It hasn't had much pre-publicity in the way that, say, Time Crash had. So I'm guessing that it's the case. But again, that's just a guess. I can't see it having some sort of comedy spin-off because that was more comic relief for time and space. So yeah, it's probably just a taster. And I know everyone will review it and everyone will talk at great length about that. So I'll probably just discuss that at some point in the future. I don't know, maybe it's at Christmas when it's actually on. So, 
before. Yes, and I know you're desperate to hear my little reviews and my little thoughts on a little audio that was out in 2002. I just want to say there's something rather marvellous at the very, very end of this podcast. A bunch of podcasters, and sadly this didn't include me, because, you know, I had a bad throat again, got together and recorded a song. Yes, you heard that right. Save Doctor Who Confidential. It's a track that I hope will touch your very soul. It will heal your core and other sorts of things that people say. They've called themselves No Touch Pod. It may or may not happen to sound like something that was out, you know, years ago and Colin Baker was there. Let's not go there. And it's basically a catchy new Christmas single from No Touch Pod. Let's save Confidential. If you need to download this, or indeed send it to a DJ for radio play, it's available at www.netconjurer, all one word, .co.uk, slash, confidential, slash. Or even you could just type in, let's save confidential song, and it will come up. So that's something for you to look forward to. But first, this. Big Issue! My name's Toby Davenport, age 17. 18 now, I suppose. Go back and get it right, you moron. Straight up, Gov, it's a perfect match. Toby Davenport? Him? Why? Apparently, he's taken off somewhere. No one's seen him for yonks. They thought he might have gone back up north. But at the weekend, he rang Mike at the shelter a, a bit spooked. So Mike thought if he loses this spot to one of the gangs, he'll have to start all over again. Seriously, Nat, this has really bugged me. It's bad enough having to sleep in doorways. It's just a kid. Could be one of mine if I had any. But just to be wiped off the face of the... I mean, it's as bad as Argentina and that just... OK, OK, I get your drift. And the word Dao itself means the way. A way of life. Certainly. But far more than that. One might call it the way of nature. It is the stillness beneath the turmoil of creation, the emptiness which is the mother of the 10,000 things, the eternity in the present moment. Once you mentioned Toby's name, they just clammed up. You don't understand. At my age, if I go without more than one, I'll... I'll peg out, kick the bucket, shuffle off this mortal coil, or is die the word you're looking for? Yes, of course. Sarah Jane Smith. The bitch. So this is the second of the first series. The characters are largely established, and we can now get on with the business of actually having a Sarah Jane story. Here's the synopsis. The body of an old man is found floating in the Thames. Although the DNA of the corpse corresponds to an 18-year-old friend of Joss and Ellie, Sarah Jane heads towards West Yorkshire in a bid to discover what killed the man, why someone is kidnapping homeless teenage boys, and whether there is a link between that and the retreat of philanthropist Will Butley, which hosts the Hang Tea Clinic. Sarah discovers that there is more to ancient dark sorcery than she may otherwise have believed. Yes, it's a cracking little story, and fills its allotted 73 minutes really, really well. This one's been written by Barry Letts, and you can tell there are definite, well, echoes of earlier Doctor Who stories, but there are also echoes of things which come later. Of course, it's got a homeless kid in it, so it's comparable to The Curse of Clylanger. It's got somebody living well past their sell-by date, which has got more than a touch of a whole plethora of Torchwood storylines, not least of which is Miracle Day. I've got a couple of issues with it, but they're issues I've got personally because, as you may or may not know, I live in the area where this is set. But I'm also from Newcastle, as you can possibly tell from my dodgy accent. No. You see, Sarah Jane Smith, and I'm not saying Liz Slayton here, Sarah Jane Smith puts on an accent apparently from somewhere up north. Now, I know that Liz Slayton is from Liverpool, so that accent would have been fine to pull off. But it's Sarah Jane who's impersonating someone from the North, not Liz Sladen. Liz Sladen, I'm sure, could have done a much better job of the accent. So it's an actor playing an actor playing an actor, if you see what I mean. It's it's a lot like when David Tennant was playing the Doctor pretending to be human rather than 
David Tennant was playing a human who used to be the Doctor who couldn't remember. It was a subtle difference. That kind of jarred, but it didn't jar half as much as one line that's halfway through. Somebody gets killed, and that's hardly a spoiler. And Sarah Jane is detached, and somebody passes comment on that, and she says she picked that up from someone she once knew. That doesn't really feel true, does it? I suppose it is if you look at it on paper. Did Sarah Jane pick up being detached and non-emotional from the Doctor? We're thinking the third or fourth, I just don't know. Barry Letts obviously was more of, well, a third Doctor kind of a guy. There's even a mention of Venusian Aikido, which bizarrely Sarah gets to use at one point, but only in a Vulcan neck grip kind of a way. I can live with these things, I can, because they're so much better than the sonic lipstick. But I'm not sure that the Doctor's influence was that negative. Perhaps she could move on and sort it out later, or deal with it in a different way. Something, some different line may have worked. It's not the Sarah Jane Smith I know, but that's fine. That's why I'm listening to these stories, and Barry Letts knows his stuff. Yes, you've got ancient mysticism as seen in, well, Planet of the Spiders, or small villages in the middle of nowhere, as of course seen in the Demons. All lovely Barry Letts memes, if you want to use that word. So yeah, you've got the lovely things with people on mobile phones describing what's going on, or one person climbing up somewhere and describing it to the person on the ground, which is very nice, but seems clunky in modern Big Finish parlances. But you have to remember, Big Finish hadn't been around for that long, and Barry Letts's work on radio was more of this type. It's much more polished than, say, Ghosts of Endspace or something like that, which again featured Les Sladen. There's no apparent alien technology in this storyline, and I can live with that. I really can, which is something we kind of got spoiled for on Sarah Jane. So yes, the 2005, the pre-2005 Big Finish was a different creature. It was finding its feet, but it was also able to use language that it couldn't possibly use these days. There's a few swear words mentioned here that you just kind of wouldn't get in a modern release. They were almost jarring. They didn't take you out of the drama. It felt more Radio 4 than Big Finish, which isn't really a bad thing, is it? So overall, a tremendously well-produced piece, and that's perfectly fine. I am really looking forward to Series 1, Episode 3, which I'll either review next time or the time after, because I'm sure there's some DVDs I really need to review. So until next time, be seeing you. You have been listening to the Tin Dog Podcast. Doctor Who and its associated shows are all trademark of the BBC. No infringement is intended. Contact us at tin-dog at hotmail.co.uk.
Deb Fountain. First class writer, third class singer. I think that was more the Roger Moore approach, don't you? I mean, it was wonderful. I mean, eyebrow acting at its finest.